Well, Father, I truly do thank you for being in our midst tonight. I thank you, Father God, for ministering to the people during praise and worship, meeting every need, Father. And Father, I'm asking you right now that you be with us as we go forth with this teaching. And Father God, let it minister to our hearts the way you want it to minister to our hearts. And let us receive the abundance of your mercy that's in this teaching. And Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> you know, I had a different, whole different uh, teaching together. You probably get it Sunday then. You know, God's always uh, giving me visions and speaking to me. And at the last minute, I uh, change things around and but tonight it's, um, you know, we, we have lost so much in the last 10 years of ourselves with all the fat battling we've been going through and, and how the enemy has just come in and just taken and taken and taken. And we've had, we've had to really fight the good fight of faith to stay, you know, above board and I, I really believe, I don't know about you, but I know in me, in battling like that, there were some things I've lost. And um, God is trying to get us to understand he wants to give it all back to us. <laughs> but it's up to us, you know, are we going to allow God to do the things that he wants to do? All right, you know, what happened here was God gave me a vision, and I was sitting on this stool, and God told me to look around. I looked, and I saw everyone in this building, and I also saw those in the world, and then God said, my body is a broken people, working out of brokenness, and they must be healed. And, you know, and I sat, and I thought about that for quite some time. All right, you know, I always put my own self in the mix, you know, and, and you know, and I thought about the last, let's say, five years, and um, I've gone through a lot of brokenness, and you know, and trying to battle through that brokenness and trying to, you know, to keep, you know, in line with God the way I needed to be in line with God in order to teach, it was quite a struggle, not to just get lost in that brokenness. Then you look around about you and you see the ones you love. I'm not talking just about family members. You know, we love each other here in the body of Christ. And um, but when you look around, you see your loved ones battling also. And you see them in their brokenness. Sometimes I wonder, where is it all going to end? How is it all going to end? And somewhere in the word, God said, if he didn't step up and do something, even the very elect would be lost, right? And I really believe with all my heart we are at that point right now in the body of Christ where God's going to have to come forth and do something or some of the very elect are going to be dropping out because of the brokenness within and around about. And then after I, you know, God spoke this to me, then... Um, um, then I ran across this. God, God said, uh, okay, so I said, God said, my people is a broken people working out of brokenness and they must be healed. All right, let me stop there and say something else before I go on. And God also spoke to me and said about judgmentalism in our homes, in the body of Christ. The body of Christ has still not learned not to judge others. They have not yet to learn to look in their own backyard and see that they have more stones than the one you're judging. And they haven't learned to judge themselves and hail that up before God and allow God to heal you before you go to this other person that you're judging that's just as broken as you are. And we, we have lost the uh, gifting from God to understand that hurting people hurt others. And this is why you see a lot of junk going on in the body of Christ is because we think we're all that and then some. And we don't understand that the person that's hurting you 
is hurting really bad themselves. We are at a point in our walk with God where the enemy is throwing everything at us that he has. God said, told us, remember a while back, a couple years ago, God is throwing everything at us that he has in hell, and it's all meant to take us down. And instead of some people sitting quietly and becoming humble before God and admitting, I've got a lot of inward issues that I need to be taken care of before I go throwing hate and, you know, and all that judgmentalism to somebody else. And this is where the body of Christ is at. You have to stop that. Because when I hear you, I don't see, I don't hear love. I don't see grace. I don't see mercy. I do get upset with people. But I get over it. I get upset with the fact, you know, that, that, that you weren't even trying to get out of what you're in. Now, the people in the world are, the other message I'm going to give is a really good one. Uh, also, but the people in the world don't know how to get out of it. But the body of Christ has been sitting in the house of God for years and years and years, and they've heard the word, but they never apply it. So therefore, they don't get out of anything. And, you know, if you're one that's under a lot of attack, <clears throat> you go through, you know, you get through this one attack, and you think, thank God I'm done with that. And then you think you're going to have some breathing space but the next day. You don't have no breathing space because the enemy was there before you ever got out of bed to attack you when your eyes opened up. And, and it's been a long, hard battle. And if, if you know, it's time, saints of God, you get honest with yourselves. Really get honest with yourselves and tell yourself where you're at on God's timeline. And are you helping yourself or are you pretending you're all right and everybody else is all wrong? That is going on in the body of Christ. Some people think they've attained it. You know, God told me they haven't attained at all. There's no humility. You know, they just run around saying, well, I know more than anybody else does and, and I don't have no problems. Well, you're the one who has the biggest problem to begin with. You know, if we could just if we could just understand that the harder God's trying to pull families together, is Satan is trying ten times harder to pull families apart. And the more God is working on the family's love walk, the more the devil he one hundred fold more that the enemy is working on the family's love walk. He will make sure that there's always a disturbance somewhere. And if you're like me, you say, God, will this ever end? Yeah, I don't know if you, I go there. God, will this ever end? I'm just not talking about love in the family. I'm just talking about love in the world. All the hate and the discord and the junk that's being thrown around there. And I was sitting on the edge of the bed the other day, and something came on a, a, a program, and, and I turned around and I started watching it, and I said, you know, what they're acting out is what life is all about, which is a mess. So your TV programs are acting out what has really occurred in the world, and it's not good. God wants the body of Christ to line up, be the ones that make a change, be the ones that go the extra mile. Are, are you listening? You know, I was thinking, I was thinking coming in here and Something happened in my life, and God gave me that. Hit that scripture, if somebody asks for your coat or hat, give them your coat too, or however that goes. And I said, well, God, <laughs> I thought they took enough. <laughs> but see, the Bible tells you, okay, so they want that, then give them more. And I said, God, I don't, I, I haven't, I forgot about that. So instead of me doing that, I complained and carried on like I just lost my mind, and it didn't get me anywhere. Are you understanding that? Uh, we have to get back to basics. We have to get back to the basics of the word that, that tells us about the true Jesus. And let us bring the lost and the dying into the house of God. You know, the lost and dying are in your, in, in your, in your uh, family line. It's just not the people out on the street. 
You have lots of people right in your own family line. They might go to church, but they're not saved. If they were saved, they wouldn't be acting the way they are. But then they watch you go to church and walk out, you act and think, well, they say they're saved and I'm saved too. <laughs> That's why we're supposed to be peculiar people. And how many of you want someday just want to stick your head under the covers and say, God, I don't want to show anybody my face today because I, I don't want to have to go through anything to let them see I'm a peculiar person. You know, I've just about had it and I had enough. Have you ever gone there? You've just had enough. And you want to stick your head in, in the pillow and, and just stay there. But we can't do that because we have a great works before us. Okay, God said, receive your healing. God is removing the lens of loss. Now, this Lana Vazer, she's the one that wrote this article, and it just, and this is, I'm going to read it. She said, a shifting of lenses from death to life. Recently, I heard the Lord speaking over many who have been through an intense season of trauma and loss. The Lord was highlighting perspective and how the things many had been through had shifted their lenses. And I'm going to be honest, my lenses were shifted. And not in a good way either. And so when you allow your lens to shift in a bad way, it's really hard getting them back to where they should be. All right? The Lord showed me that because of the trauma people had endured, they were now looking at life through the lens of loss and death. The confident expectation of goodness, hope, and restoration had been lost. I've been, I was there. See, I'm honest with my emotions. The devil can't get into me and, and, and torment me with anything because I'm honest with myself. I felt the Lord's heart to so strongly for them. There was a terrible, there was a tangible sense of the comfort of the Lord and the healing and deliverance by his spirit from these traumas. Let's read that again. The confident expectation of goodness, hope, and restoration had been lost. I felt the Lord's heart so strongly for them. There was a tangible sense of the comfort of the Lord and the healing and deliverance by his spirit from these traumas. At the same time, there was a strong call to come up higher and to see from his perspective and lens, the lens of life. Healing of trauma in the secret place. There was such a strong sense in this encounter that the shifting of the lenses was taking place in the secret place. It was in and from the place of intimacy. It was in and from a place of coming to him. You know, God's been calling us to be intimate with him. To cut you and to come into his presence where nobody else can come. And it's in this place in him that he can heal the trauma in your life. My other message, I had worked forever on it. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I was talking to God about it one night. And I went to sleep and I got up the next morning. And you know what? My whole bedroom atmosphere, my whole you know, the bedroom, the study in the bathroom was all changed. I had a visitation. I don't know if it was from God or an angel. But during that night as I slept, I had a visitation, and I myself was changed. See, God, I was giving my heart to God and talking to God about the message that I was. he had me preparing. And I was crying out to him to restore unto me my rightful place and what the palmer and cankworm had stolen. And God came and visited me and did just that. You're going to have to do something, saints. You can't expect somebody else to restore you. You know, everybody's done all they can do. They've prayed, they've fasted, you know, and now it's up to you. It's up to you to get in, in the secret place with God and pour out your heart to him. Be honest with him and tell him exactly where you're at. And then he'll start the healing process. How many of you have been to a place you don't even feel worthy to give God's word because the trauma you went through has changed you so completely inside and you're you're fighting that trauma, trying to get back to normal, you know, what I call normal. And, and it, it's a mess. It's just, it's just one string of lies from the enemy after the other. 
All right, there was such a limited view that had come through the places of trauma. I knew from this encounter that many were still living in and from trauma, and it was affecting every area of their lives. I want you to apply, I want you to apply this to yourself tonight. I saw it affecting their physical bodies, their emotional health, their spiritual health, their mental health, and relationships. The trauma had put a lid upon their lives, but no more, God is saying. I saw them come to him, allowing the Spirit of God to minister to parts of their hearts where trauma had come in. <clears throat> and what I would like for you to do tonight as you hear this is you would open yourself up and allow God to come into your heart and minister to the traumas in your life and to heal you. You know, God said there's coming a day and an hour when no man will be able to come against those who have secured themselves in his loving arms. He just now said that, so why don't we make tonight that night? Why don't we make tonight the night when we just sell ourselves totally out to God, invite him into our pain? And I don't know if you're like me, but Sometimes I will deny pain. It doesn't exist. Therefore, if it doesn't exist, I don't have to deal with it. I'm terrible about death. When somebody de dies, I deny that. But I have to deal with it. But I found out also that I also deny pain. I don't want to accept the fact that somebody can hurt me as deeply as what they do. And I don't think I'm the only one in this room that's ever going there. And if you haven't gone there, that's wonderful. Be honest with yourself and go there. That's what's kept you, kept you in bondage. It's all this pain that you've covered over and covered over and covered over. And then one day it's going to explode. Then you're going to stand there with the egg on your face and say, Oh, God, what did I do? Why didn't I let you have every one of these pains to come along instead of like letting them stack up to the to the point where they exploded and then everybody gets hurt? All right. She said, I watched tears flow like rivers. I watched tears of healing fall as Jesus stepped into those places of trauma and by his spirit brought total freedom and restoration. Read that again, Brad. I watch tears flow like rivers. I watch tears of healing fall as Jesus stepped into those places of trauma and by his spirit brought total freedom and restoration. See, she actually saw it. It's not something she's writing about. She literally saw it. So if she can see it happening, then it is happening even to some of you in here tonight. As Jesus stepped in, they repented from looking through the lens of trauma. I had to do that. God always says, look through my eyes. And I wasn't looking through his eyes. I was looking through trauma. Be honest. A lot of you are doing that too. Maybe you don't understand you're doing it. But you're doing that too, and this is why I'm giving this tonight. As Jesus stepped in, a breath of life by his spirit was entering their hearts again. As Jesus stepped in, there was an eviction notice sent to the enemy by the Spirit of God, where the enemy had brought such torment into the lives of these precious saints because of the trauma they had endured. The enemy's landing pad of trauma in their lives was no more. The Lord was closing the door. You know, I've told you, you know, whenever God showed me the truth about my father, I realized that I, w I had that trauma inside of me and I had it covered up and I really wasn't functioning 100% in what God wanted me to function with because I was in denial of what my life was all about. How many of you are, th are there? Maybe you're not, and that's wonderful. But I'm going to tell you, it's just as wonderful to be free. 
once you admit you're there, and then you let God heal you. The enemy's landing pad of trauma in their lives was no more. The Lord was closing the door. Redeeming the places where trauma once lived. And you know, I asked um, three people to give me a word. I don't ever do this. But Brother Brett was one of them. And Brother Brett, you, this here, the enemy is landing pad of trauma in their lives was no more. The Lord was closing the door. You gave me a word about that. God had told me it was finished. And you gave me a word about that. God will do that for you now. He'll let you know that he's really done a great work. Redeeming the places where trauma once lived. I then began to see that the Lord was breathing upon the very places where these traumas and losses had taken place. He said, these are now the places of flourishing. These are now the places of life. These are now the places of my resurrection life. These are now the places of great increase. These are now the places of radical recompense. These are now the places of rapid restoration. I like that. And, and that's what happened to me overnight after, after God dealt with me about a lot of things. Overnight, he's, he restored me back to my rightful place, back to wholeness in him. No more trauma, no more lenses to look through. But now I can look through the eyes of Jesus and see life as it truly is. There was such a turnaround that the Lord brought by his spirit, which could only be done by his spirit. What trauma had stolen, the Lord was now supernaturally healing, delivering, and restoring in a way that only he could do. You know, I, I can't I can't do this for you. It has to be you getting along with God, talking to God. I didn't cry and carry on well. I just had a conversation with the Father. And he did the rest. I watched as supernatural alignment was taking place in bodies, minds, relationships, spiritual health, and circumstances. So when you get the trauma out of you, all these other all these other things that are plaguing you are supernaturally going to take place. Trauma no longer had a voice. The enemy no longer had a voice in these traumas. As healing flowed by his spirit and word into these places, changing the narrative, the landscape, and the perspective. Trauma will no longer have a voice after you invite God to come in and cleanse. You will no longer look through the lens of loss, saying, I was looking through what everybody had taken from me. It doesn't bother me no more. It wasn't mine to begin with. Are you understanding this? Everything belongs to God. But all of a, all of a sudden, I get, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. That was trauma. It's not mine, it's God's. And, and because I kept saying it was mine, it was messing me up. All right, expect increase, and then God starts speaking. I am removing that lens of loss, and I am re repositioning you in expectancy. Where many of you have suffered so much torment in your minds and in discerning my voice, the spinning of confusion, in discerning what I am saying, that, has, that is now breaking, and I am bringing clarity in hearing my voice once again. I think everybody sitting here tonight needs clarity in hearing God's voice. You can't you can't think, well that that might be God. No, you can't think that way. Either you're either there is or it isn't. I am increasing your expectancy as I am breathing upon you. I am calling you up higher. Come up higher by going deeper in pursuing me in intimacy and go deeper in my word to receive the revelation and pen, panoramic view that I am releasing to you. Let you, as, as you invite God into your trauma, 
God is going to do so many great, I know what he did for me in a couple of days. God is going to do so many great things in your life that you're not even going to recognize yourself for a couple of days because you're so used to this person that was operating out of trauma, you know, that it just sort of, you, then you had to readjust <laughs> and get back to God's peace and his grace and start operating how God wants you to operate. God said, not only am I removing the lens of loss, but I'm also in increasing your vision to see as I see. See that? You'll see yourself as Jesus sees you. You might look at yourself as, boy, I, I, you know, I'm done, or whatever you might be thinking. But as you invite God into this trauma in your life, then he's going to let you see yourself as he sees you. It's a whole different picture. A whole different picture. Some of you aren't going to like what you see. <laughs> because you already puffed yourself up so much. But others, you're going to you're going to think it's wonderful what God shows you. Consecrate yourselves deeper in this time to listen to what I am saying. And continue to cry out for the higher perspective, my perspective, you know, God's perspective, that I am ushering you into. For in your crying out, in your desperation for me, I am stretching you and making room for the more that I am releasing to you now as I remove this lens of loss. If you don't let God remove that lens of loss, you're not going to get the more. You're not going to get everything that God has for you, all the abundance of everything. So allow God tonight to take the trauma. I don't care where it's from. You know, if you're really honest with yourself, God will take you way back when. And he'll walk you up through it. And say, let me have this, let me have this, let me have this. And you'll be surprised at how some of that trauma came in. And you didn't even know it was there. God said, many of you have felt like the traumas you have endured almost killed you. And the confusion and torment it brought has kept you stuck and contained. That's true, if you're honest with yourself. God says, no more. Today is a new day where I am delivering you into greater expectancy. Sevenfold restoration, sevenfold repayment, and double recompense are upon you. Well, I ask for a hundredfold. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can ask for, you can be content with sevenfold. I want a hundred. Oh, I am delivering you and bringing you into a place of seeing what I am doing and hearing what I am saying like never before. Read that again. I am delivering you and bringing you into a place of seeing what I am doing and hearing what I am saying like never before. I am working deeply on that place of perspective and expectancy. Make room by pardoning with me and what I am doing in your perspective and expectancy as great expanse and increase are upon you. God saying, I don't care where you're at in your walk with me. You, you have always walked in trauma. The enemy has always targeted you. It's one to take out. So he made sure that you always walked in some sort of trauma. But tonight, God is saying, I want to take that trauma from you. I want, you, I want to set you free from all your expectations. And I want to fill you full of my expectations for you. You know, and God's saying the hurting, dying, and lost are standing outside of those doors. They're waiting for you to get free of your trauma so that then you in return can free them. And I've gone I went through a spell not too long ago where I was hurting, so I lashed out other people were hurting in my home. And what did that get? More trauma. 
it didn't fix anything. It didn't bring any peace. It just brought more trauma. We can no longer do that. If the word of God says you have to love the unlovable, you or God commands you to love the unlovable, then when you're lashing out at the unlovable, you're going against God's commandment. You and I used to be one I could sit down and say, Well, you know, you don't I don't know why they're what happened to them today. I don't understand you know why it's making them act like this. But now I say now I say I used to. I don't care what happened to them today. I'm not putting up with that. That's not Jesus. That's the world. That's because you're working in, through trauma. You're, you're not working through the uh, looking through the eyes of God. You're not seeing people as God sees them. You're not even seeing yourself as God sees you. Now, when you're acting like a fool and shooting your mouth off, I hope God doesn't let you see who you look like because that is the devil personified. We we all want to be leaders, I think, but nobody wants to pay the price to be a leader. And like um, Phil Wickham said, I'm going to give you 100%. I'm going to give you everything you ask of me. And this is what God, I've told you this from day one. God always said, I don't want 99.9. .9. I want 100% of you. Now, why do you get so upset if you're calling yourself a child of God and the devil's advocate comes against you? Why do you get upset? That's a given, isn't it? If you're a true, true child of God, see, and I had, to, I had to walk through this too. You know, if you're a true child of God, the devil will have his advocates come and do all manner of evil to you, just like they did Jesus. You know, God doesn't, you know, I think, keep thinking about the man who was in the airplane crash and, you know, he died and went to heaven. He was burnt really super bad. You know, and in heaven he had, he, his skin was perfect. But God talked to him and said, I'm sending you back. Well, when he came back, he came back burned. And he had to go through all, all the trauma of you know, the burn unit and everything else. He's preaching the word of God today, scarred from the burns. God did not give him perfect skin. But see, we want God to perfect us. We don't want to have any scars for anybody to see. We want we want God just to take and you know what I'm saying like if you're having it, all right. So if you were burnt, you want all you don't want no scar from that burn. And, and if we if God doesn't do that, then right away you know we come against God. What is wrong with you? There's something inside of you that needs fixed. All right. I laid in bed last night and I said. I don't want to get old, God. I don't feel old, and I don't want to get old now. You know, <laughs> that's different. <laughs> now, if you know, I don't care what he does, but but you know, um, if he doesn't fix that, then he won't fix that. But I'll still serve him. But some of you, you want God to do a certain thing in your life, and I've heard many people have said this to me. All right, I don't breathe the risen God. Why don't you breathe the risen to God? Because he didn't answer my prayer. I said, how do you know he didn't? Because he didn't do what I asked him to do. I said, well, maybe what you asked him to do was not in line with God wants for your life. Well, but it's what I wanted. And then you have to work through that. But yet the next time they're upset, God, where are you? God, oh, God, come help me, you know. So really, they're just, walk, they're just working through hurt. So we don't cast them aside just because they're working through hurt and saying dumb things. Amen. You know, um, tonight when in praise and worship, all of a sudden, that one song was, uh, who can love you, who will love you more, whatever it was, <clears throat> excuse me, was playing and Gabriel came up and sat down beside me. You know, he did that because he just, he told me one time, you know, I did that, I suppose I just want to, you look lonely, I want to sit beside you. But when he sat down there beside me, it made me feel whole. I was complete. I had somebody who truly loved me sit beside me and say, you're special to me without saying a word. Are you understanding this? 
How many of you do that to somebody? You know, somebody might be sitting in church and they're all by themselves and you're not paying no attention to them. You really don't care what's going on with them. And they they just might need somebody to come and sit down and, down and quietly say, how are you? Is there something I get for you? It's like I was saying with Sister Nancy. If she's not in that chair, there's a reason. We all know she's been sick. If anybody gets in touch with her, tell her to please call me. And I hope she gets her phone fixed so she, I, I can call her. Are you understanding what God is saying to you tonight? Are you ready to let go of the trauma in your life that you didn't even know you even had or still don't know you have, but it's there or God wouldn't have me do this? If you're ready to let go of that and let God come in in a mighty way, God's here to set you free.